Also, uh, if you notice, right on the uh, left bottom hand side, it's a uh, knowledge is power. So from now on, that's what I'm going to be using uh, whenever we talk about uh, things that have to do with learning and, you know, topics um, where we can grow together, learn, we'll react to it, and we were able to discuss it. So that's that's the main goal, but uh, knowledge is power. Like, the more you know, the more power you have. Uh, that's why books have been around for so long, you know. Uh, knowledge is key for the... Fuck, you know what, for the survival of, of the species. That's the, the reality of it. And I'm a, uh, I'm a keen believer that, again, the more you know, the better. It doesn't hurt to know something. Especially when it's just adding to your uh, list of things that you already know. So why not, know, why not learn something new? Uh, oh, it snowed, but it did stick? Nice. Oh, I wish it snowed here. I would love for it to snow. That'd be so awesome. Hell yeah, but chances of that happening are pretty slim. Slim to none at this point. Yeah. Alright, well let's get right to it. Knowledge is power, like I said. Let's do this. And we are watching a stressed documentary film. Uh, it's we're gonna see a lot of interviews with like doctors, scientists. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of um, you know um, <laughs> medical talk. You know, uh, again, I only saw parts of it just to make sure that it, it was in line with the topic. But it's it's I'm it's basically a blind reaction as well. It's. The little bits I did see, they were pretty interesting, so I'm looking forward to watching this. Uh, just to, you know, put a disclaimer out there. I, <laughs> personally, me, and I am in no way, shape, or form a doctor. Anything close to it. I am a mere common man that just likes to learn things. That's it. So, just wanted to... I just wanted to put that out there. All right, let's continue. Actually, Tori, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you fill a lot of roles in your kid's life. Because that's like, I remember my mom, yeah, she was the doctor. She was the the quick engineer. She was like the, the best cook. You know, she was like the whole, she had like a thousand things that she would do. She was like, she was a superwoman at this point. It's crazy. Shout out to my mom. Much love. If we can get back to our essence, I think that's where we belong. That's home. You've had all these experiences in life. And yet, there's one part of you that was there the whole time. That same essence, your same awareness, your same consciousness has been with you this whole time. And it's with you now. We're still struggling, stumbling. Some people are dying in the process. Some people are sick unnecessarily. But eventually, we've got to get there. And we can change the paradigm. We can, we can do it.
Stress. It's a word we hear every day. People are stressed out, work is stressful, but what do we really know about stress? Before we can figure that out, let's take a quick travel back in time starting around 70,000 BC. Hunter-gatherers had to be on high alert in order to survive from other predators in their environment. Even though this seems like an extremely long time ago, we actually react to stress in the environment just like these early people. Let's fast forward to early in the 17th century to see French philosopher René Descartes, who famously said, I think, therefore I am. He is also responsible for the idea of mind-body dualism, which some call the mind-body problem. He theorized that if the mind was a thinking thing and the body was a non-thinking thing, that the mind could exist without the body, but the body could not exist without the mind, which essentially declared them as separate. This paved the way for many schools of thought addressing this mind-body split. Several decades later, we hear the word stress used by English natural philosopher Robert Hooke in engineering terms. He was interested in how man-made structures such as bridges could be made to withstand heavy loads without collapsing. He created what he called the law of elasticity, which demonstrated how something like a spring could withstand a certain amount of stress before it reached a breaking point. This machine-like analogy proved to be fertile ground for future explanations of how humans experience stress. His rival at the time, Sir Isaac Newton, would soon introduce his three laws of motion, which would continue to point toward a mechanistic view of the body. He also held a grudge against Robert Hooke and is responsible for why you've probably never heard of him. And now, to jump ahead to the mid-1800s. French physician Claude Bernard introduced the idea that the internal environment of living organisms must remain fairly constant in response to changes in the external environment. Based on this work, in the early 1900s, American physiologist Walter Bradford Cannon coined the term homeostasis to describe this neutral stable state that needed to exist for the body to survive. He also coined the term fight or flight, but we'll get back to that later. When it comes to our current understanding of stress, the man responsible is Hungarian-Canadian endocrinologist Hans Selye. He is known for his work studying what he called general adaptation syndrome. He would later coin the term stress, which is still used to explain aspects of the stress response. This response is directly responsible for helping the body to return to homeostasis, which brings us to today. Wow, holy crap, that was pretty cool. That was a lot of great information. Uh, that, uh, scientist, Hans, he was the one that coined the term stress that we still use to this day. It's crazy. And I liked uh, the comparison with the spring. You know, you, you stress a spring out to a certain point and just... So, that's... Wow. It's funny how you can equate that with life, and that's exactly how it could, you know... <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah. it is. I, it's... I was just as blown away as you were, Tori. I'll be honest with you. See? That's why I don't I don't lie. The knowledge is power. And the more you know, the better. Can't 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 stress that even more. When I'm stressing it now, knowledge is power. Ha! Thank you, Hans. <laughs> Alright, let's let's move on. But yeah, this is ah, love it. Did you see? Did you see what I did there? Most people, when they think of stress, they think it's like they're stressed out in their mind. They're worrying about things. They're obsessing about things. The response part of the stress response is your body's response to that stress. So most of us walking around, we don't put two and two together. When the layperson here's something like stress response. They know that stress is, they think that stress is the cause of their problem, but we teach them that stress is actually an aggravating factor of whatever existing weakness they have, because we're all stressed all the time. One of the things we want to take a look at is that people have physical stress, 
uh, biochemical nutritional stress and mental emotional stress. People think when they think of stress, it's whatever they're stressed out about at their job or their career or their, their family or whatever's going on in their life personally. But stress takes many different forms. So our goal is to make sure that they know is that uh, all of these things are equally important. Your mind and your body are the same thing. It's not some new agey kind of statement. If you alter your mind, it's gonna alter your body. If you can address a person's stress in their life, I feel like that should be number one because we know that mental stress will affect the body in a physical way. So, so many Americans have gastrointestinal issues, they have stomach issues, their digestion's not great, they bloat after they eat, and yeah, there's a good portion of that that's from food, but we also know that so much of our stress goes right to our digestive tract. And so, I've found with many patients as I'm addressing their food, but more importantly, it's also looking at what else is going on in their life. And it's amazing how when they're able to digest more of what's going on in their life, they're able to digest their food better and everything else, and the whole system starts clearing up. The person who has a heart attack today, were they healthy yesterday? Of course not. Were they healthy last week or last month? Uh, most likely not. But there was something that was going on that led to that crisis, that heart attack. The, the I'll put this. The emotions work the same way. They accumulate, they accumulate, and then something goes wrong. When somebody's under a lot of stress, at least emotional stress. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it does, dude. Karma works like a... Karma's a bitch. Works extremely quickly. <laughs> I turned my hearing aid off. That's what happened. So I couldn't... I wasn't getting anything. It's like, oh, what's going on? Uh... <laughs> I don't know if I, I guess you didn't hear what I said, but what I said was that I, I love when you call me grandpa. Like I laugh so hard and I always imagine that gif of uh, um, the golden girl putting a, uh, she has her glasses, uh, her sunglasses on. She's like, I'm cool. So yeah, please just know that every time you say that or every time I, you write it, I, I just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, moving on. A whole cascade of things can be going on from neck problems to low back problems to stomach problems to anxiety to um, I've seen people go through cyclical infections to you name it. Stress causes almost every condition out there. Adding to that, uh, I have here uh, could cause or plays a part in problems such as headaches, high blood pressure, heart problems, diabetes, skin conditions, asthma, arthritis, depression, and anxiety. Oh yeah, those are some negative effects of stress on your body, adding to what she, uh, to the ones that she just mentioned right now. Um. And if we can just take some of that emotional pressure off their system, at least the chemistry of that emotion, their body has a better chance to heal. When we're struck by a stressor on a day that our system is already um, somewhat compromised, 
It's just like, it's it's really like adding, you know, one more little teeny tiny hair to the pile and it just, everything just crumbles in that moment. And we're very adaptable and we're very, um, you know, our nervous systems are very intelligent and it figures out a way to kind of cope and get through. But what we often end up doing is developing coping mechanisms that don't work when we get a little bit older. Uh, I often have patients come in and say, oh, I'm sabotaging myself. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. And they are beating themselves up because these patterns are coming into play. But what they don't realize is that these patterns saved them as children. These patterns are survival skills that have just gone a little wonky. Where I find stress is a really big deal for a lot of people are their, their own internal thoughts. Um, they beat themselves up. Uh, they don't think they're good enough. Uh, they feel like they have to be perfect. And every time they fail at something, they, they stress themselves out. And those are the stressors which uh, oftentimes people don't think they're stressed about. But if So ask yourself this. If every time you do something wrong, do you beat yourself up? If you do that, you're stressing yourself out. So um, what we try and do is we help people recognize those things so that they can uh, deal with them a little bit more effectively so that they don't actually stress themselves out internally. Some people understand that there's something called the fight or flight syndrome. And in the fight uh, or flight syndrome, that's looking at a, a part of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is um, uh, a sciencey way of talking about the part of the nervous system that isn't the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is the brain and the nerves that connect down. The autonomic nervous system has two major branches, so to speak. Sympathetic, which we call fight or flight, and the parasympathetic, which we could call relaxation and restoration. When we're in that latter mode, the relaxation restoration mode of our nervous system, that's when healing occurs, that's when the body rejuvenates itself. When we're in the fight or flight mode, we're actually getting ready to ward off something threatening. So we, we need that, but we can't be in it all the time or it has negative health effects. You might be driving in traffic and someone cuts in front of you, your life's not in danger, but your body gives the same response. And that ties back into the stress response. Because when you go into that fight or flight uh, state of being, your parasympathetic calming nervous system is turned off. That also turns off all your healing and resting and digesting portion of your body. And it, uh, this is a quick uh, pause. Um, so just because they've, they've mentioned it a few times already, I'll just read really quickly uh, what uh, fight or flight the, like the definition of it so it says uh fight or flight or the fight flight or freeze response also called hyper arousal or the acute stress response is a physiological reaction that occurs in response to a perceived harmful event attack or threat to survival it was first described by walter bradford cannon his theory states that animals react to threats with a general discharge of the sympathetic nervous system which is uh what, what we just saw right now, uh, preparing the animal for fighting or fleeing. More specifically, the adrenal medulla produces a hormonal cascade that results in the secretion of cata catecholamines, especially uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine, the hormones estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol as well as the neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin also affect how organisms react to stress. Uh, the hormone osteocalcin might also play a part. Uh, this response is recognized as the first stage of the general adaptation syndrome that regulates stress responses among vertebrates and other organisms. Yeah, pretty interesting. All right, moving on. If we don't find ways of breaking that fight or flight response, then the symptoms you see of too much stress, poor digestion, can't sleep at night, make sense. 